Call on this meeting of the COVID-19 committee to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. Davis. Present. Alderman member Coro. Pre present. Uh, the woman Hubbard. All the woman Gracia. Present. All the woman Murphy. Here. Alderman Coder. Here. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Odenberg. Here. All the woman Boyd. Here. All the woman Miller. All the woman Clark Hubbard. President Reed. Here. All the woman Hubbard. All the men Muhammad. All the woman Middlebrook. All the woman Clark Hubbard. Here. Nine president, you have corn. Quorum being present, we are going to dispense with line item three. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. So moved. It's been moved by the all the one from the six. Entertain a second on that motion. Second. second. Uh, I think that was Coder and someone else. Alderman from the seventh. And any, any discussion on the approval of the minutes? No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, board bills for review. We have um, one item, uh, board bill number 49. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for, uh, for approval of board bill 49 and get it in front of us. I move that we put board bill 49 in front of us. It's been moved Second. by the other woman from the 13th. Uh, in Second. a Seconded by the other woman from the 27th. Um, Alderman from the 10th, you're recognized on board bill number 49. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee. Uh, before we proceed, uh, a moment of, um, are we going to have to withdraw these previous ones we did, Lewis, or is there, uh, Mr. President? Yes, you can, procedure for this? well, you can move to withdraw. You can move to withdraw the um, previous amendments if you if you'd like. Um, but these, the but these are going to these are going to be a word for word replacement. But um, to make it cleaner, let's withdraw uh, uh, amendments one through six. Would could you, we do it all at one time, having go to the prevailing side? Uh, well, there are a couple ways we a couple ways we could do it. We could just do. Uh, just we looking could, for the most efficient. Yeah, we can uh, make a motion to remove them, or when you make the motion to approve these new amendments, you can say that amendment number one to replace the amendment number one made last last week. You can okay. do it that way. All right. I just trying to get a procedure done and looking it up and talking to folks, just making sure we do it correctly. Yeah. So, uh, so let's just make it easier when you're introducing the, the first few amendments that okay. are going to replace the amendments well, I, that were made at the last. How about I, I would? Uh, uh, you're not going to make uh, you're not going to make the motion, but yes, if please. someone would like to do that, I would suggest maybe removing, withdrawing our, our previous amendments. If someone would like sure. to make a motion. Yeah, Mr. President, uh, having voted on the prevailing side, I uh, move that we reconsider. Uh, the votes by which amendments, I think, one through six were previously passed. Second. And moved and seconded. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis. Aye. Alderman Vaccaro. Aye. Alderman Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Ingracia? Aye. Alderwoman Murphy? Aye. 
Alderman Coder. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Middlebrook. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Aye. President Reed. Aye. And I vote. By your vote, stay in the motion of the Alderman from the 16th and move to reconsider the amendments that were passed in the previous meeting, amendments one through six. Uh, Alderman from the 10th, uh, you're now recognized to speak on your bill and then we'll take up the amendments uh, if you have an amendment to. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Board Bill 49, uh, which we're very familiar with, we have uh, some amendments to add to that. Uh, and I believe we have them all in proper procedure currently. Uh, I will bring before you uh, amendment number one right. to board bill 49. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on amendment number one from any member of the committee. I'll make a I, motion that we, oh, can somebody make a motion then? I move that we adopt n amendment number one. Been moved by the alderman from the seventh to entertain a second on that motion. Second. Seconded by the alderman from the 23rd. Any discussion on amendment number one? Alderman from the 10th, would you like to read the language of amendment number one into the record? Certainly. Thank you, sir. To amend said board bill, page five, line seven, as follows. Beginning on page five, line seven, after the words expenditures previously incurred. We will be inserting the following words and figures. In addition to those positions and personnel expenses authorized in the table of organization and personnel pay schedule and annual operating plans for the fiscal years 2020 and 2021, the director of the Department of Health and Hospitals hereby is authorized to employ one health service managers to position code 5682, grade 18M, according to the civil service classification plan and the compensation plan. One Health Services Manager 1, position code 5681, grade 17M, according to the Civil Service Classification Plan and the Compensation Plan. And four Public Health Educators, position code grade 15G, according to the Civil Service Classification Plan and the Compensation Plan. And the Director of the Department of Health and Hospitals is authorized to pay salaries and benefits for such employees in whole or in part from the CARES funds appropriated in this section. Thank you. It's been moved by the Alderman from the seventh, seconded by the Alderman from the 23rd that we adopt amendment number one. Any further discussion on amendment number one? I have a question, Mr. President. Uh, all the women from the sixth, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a Quick question, out of the pools of money um, on Exhibit A, where is this money coming out of and how much um, money is, do all of these positions make up? It looks like there's six of them. Uh, Alderman from the 10th, would you like to pick up that or invite? Well, some? if we could, I'll, I'll refer to my uh, helpers in the mayor's office with the financial. Mr. Uh, Conway. Mr. Conway, you're available? go to exhibit A and if you would look at um, the fourth line down that will be in the line of two million fifty thousand dollars that also include will include the per performance contact tracers thank you no further questions all right. Uh, all the one from the 27th, you had your hand up. Uh, all the woman from the 27th. Uh, yes, are, sir, Mr. President. My question: Could I ask the uh, uh, sponsor a question, please? Yes, all the one from the 10th. Uh, there's, uh, uh, yes, question? I will yield. Yes. The question that I have, uh, are these positions temporary or, and if they're not, where would the funding come from after they, if they're not temporary? I believe my understanding is, is 
I believe these are to be funded by the by the CARES Act only. Uh, anything further than that would require uh, finding money for them, is my understanding. If I'm wrong, Mr. Conway, please correct me. That, that is definitely correct. We, the, the contact tracers, we hope, are per performance. But we do know, the doctor does know from experience, and we will address it next budget year, because we have the funds to make it through. The other positions, the one thing we are lacking is um, communication representatives. We found in um, some of our communities, we needed more people to reach out faster um, to have helped slow the spread of COVID-19. Uh, the, the positions that, besides the contact tracers that, that he's asking for 18 that, months um, from now. And so then after that, those positions will be re dissolved. Well, we will have to come up with an alternative fund when we get out 18 months um, from okay. now. Okay, thank you. No more questions. Any further questions? Any further questions? All right, no further questions. It's been moved by all in from the 7th, seconded by all in from the 23rd, that we adopt amendment number one. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Now we're on amendment number two. Shall I proceed? Yes. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee. Amendment number two to Board Bill 49, which you should have before you. Page five, line nine. Strike out the word thereon and insert in lieu thereof to read in words and figures as follows for expenditures authorized under this section. All right. I entertain a motion for amendment number two. So moved. I move. Moved by the one from the sixth, second by the one from the seventh. Any further discussion on amendment number two? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Amendment, All right. amendment number three. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee. Amendment number three to board bill 49. Beginning on page five, line 17, after the words previously incurred and insert the following words and figures. In addition to those positions and personnel expenses authorized in the table of organization and personnel pay schedule, and the annual operating plans for the fiscal years 2020 and 2021, the director of the Department of Human Services hereby is authorized to employ one executive assistant to position code 1629 grade 17M according to the civil service classification plan to be paid on a per performance basis. The director of the Department of Human Services is authorized to pay salaries and benefits for such employee and the CARES funds appropriated in this section. I maintain a motion on amendment number three. Mr. President, am I okay to ask a question? Uh, let's first get the amendment in front of us. Uh, I entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by the other one from the 13th. Entertain, entertain a second. Second. Seconded by the, I think that was the alderman from the 16th. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all the one from the six, you're, you, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just same quick question. What is the um, estimate of the cost of this position? And is it coming out of that same $2 million? I will defer to uh, Mr. Conway with the finance question. Uh, no, it is not coming out of that. If you go further down the exhibit A, um, you will see um, under the Department of DHS, you will see DHS administration cost of $252,000. And that's where that position will be paid. Those two positions will be paid. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Any further questions? 
been moved by the, all, of, all the woman from the 13th, seconded by all of them from the 16th, that we adopt amendment number three. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Amendment number four. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee. Amendment number four, the board bill 49, beginning on page five, line 18, strike out the word thereon and insert in lieu thereof to read the words figures as follows for expenditures authorized under this section. I'll entertain a motion on amendment number four. So moved. Moved by all the one from the six and entertain a second on that motion. Second about all the one from the 27th. Any discussion? It's been moved by all the one from the six, second by all the one from the 27th that we adopt amendment number four. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All amendment right. Number five. Amendment five. We'll be beginning on page eight, line three. After the word, thereon insert the following words and figures in addition to those positions and personal expenses authorized in the table of organization and personal pay schedule in the annual operating plans for the fiscal years 2020 and 2021 the director of the department of human services hereby is authorized to employ one contract compliance officer position code 1662 grade 14 g according to the civil service classification plan and the compensation plan, whose salary and benefits shall be paid from the ESGCV funds appropriated in this section. I'll entertain a motion on amendment number five. I'll make that motion. So moved. moved by the alderman from the 23rd. Second. Seconded by the alderman from the 13th. Any discussion on amendment number five? All the one from the six. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, same question with respect to pools of money and um, expected salaries and benefit compensation. Uh, Mr. Conway? Yes, and that is coming out as that $252,000. The, the earlier position and this position are both coming out of the two fifty-two. dollars uh, Any further discussion? Any further discussion? It's moved by the alderman from the alderman from the 23rd, seconded by the alderman from the 13th, that we adopt amendment number five. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Amendment number six. All right. Amendment six to board bill 49. Beginning line uh, program cost administration. On exhibit A, we will strike out the number 1,840,586 and insert there in lieu thereof to read as follows 1,084,059, 184,586 being replaced by 1,084,059. Entertain a motion on amendment number six. So moved. Moved by the all the one from the six. Second. Seconded second by the all the one from the thirteenth. Any further discussion on amendment number six? It's been moved by the all the one from the six. Seconded by the all the one from the thirteenth that we adopt amendment number six. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Amendment number seven. Uh, as earlier, I will defer to the alderman from the seventh, uh, 16th, as this is his amendment, sir. Alderman from the 16th, you're recognized on amendment number seven. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee. Um, amendment number seven is um, page seven, line 17, beginning on page 17, or I'm sorry, on page seven, line 17. Uh, it reads uh, where the uh, CDBG CV funds are to be allocated uh, within the exhibit there is a five million dollar line item for affordable housing construction um, as i was mentioning last week in the spirit of us at, uh, who are also some members on this committee who are members on ways and means 
Um, we are adding an additional million dollars to be used in concert with uh, affordable housing production and buttressing the affordable housing trust fund. Uh, so I worked with CDA um, and, and um, others on forming this language that supports and memorializes that effort uh, to make sure that a million dollars of this new this newfound proceeds would would in fact go uh, in line with the spending of the affordable housing trust fund. And this is the language that the CDA director uh, uh, and I came up with along with the board's counsel. So at the end of uh, that that section, uh, following the words not to exceed total appropriation of CDBGCB funds herein, we will insert uh, CDA shall expend 1 million of the $10,040,586 of the CDBGCB funds in the area of affordable housing production to the extent U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development rules and regulations allow. All right, perfect. Would you like to make a motion to adopt that amendment number seven uh, pursuant to the language you just read? You would. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I move that we adopt amendment number seven pursuant to the language herein. All right, it's been moved by all of them from the 16th, entertain a second on that motion. Second. Seconded by all of them from the 13th. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All of them from the 6th. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Alderman, can you just talk to me? I think we have touched base on this, but just um, I think you are going to speak to some other people to make sure that the flexibility of funding and the commingling of local and federal funds um, was worked out programmatically so that we are in compliance with the guidelines. Um, and then if you had considered whether or not replacing um, this federal money um, when local funding is supposed to be providing for that dollar amount, if that was something that you considered. Yeah, so there's, there's two things there. Maybe I'll take the latter part first, which is um, I think on a go forward basis, we shouldn't be looking, and, and I, I've spoken with many housing advocates uh, between uh, the last two weeks and, and today, uh, we shouldn't be anticipating the, a swap of federal funds in place of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund local budgeted monies. Um, I think we're not going to get, you know, this is sort of a, a you know, an anomaly in terms of, of additional federal funds that, that come to us. So that's where I think the opportunity arose to say this is really a unique one-time opportunity. And I do want to be perfectly clear. I, I don't want to set a precedent of, of backfilling federal dollars, whether they're the normal CDBG monies we get with, with what is, um, you know, um, the preservation of affordable housing and the affordable housing trust fund. Uh, all the women to your point, that budget uh, line item uh, for years has tended to be um, where, where we take to fill other budget holes. And I think it's been a priority of this administration and, and probably many members of this committee to make sure that we have a robust affordable housing trust fund. Um, so there, th I do qualify this amendment with that, with that this is a unique situation only so we can do both things here, both things being the preservation of affordable housing and of course, the preservation of a strong, robust reserves, which, which we critically need. And, your first qu and to your first question, um, is that I did speak with a couple of uh, affordable housing developers uh, with this regard, as well as those folks who deal with the, the programmatic activity on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and in this case, uh, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, while it certainly is more flexible in terms of its use, uh, CDBG money carries a certain amount of flexibility too, and uh, neither one should, should complicate things. I was told when home dollars are inserted in concert with affordable housing trust fund and projects, it does tend to get a little more complicated and that's because there's just more compliance and more oversight with the directed uses of those funds. But um, uh, a couple of prominent uh, affordable housing developers, one being Habitat for Humanity told me that this, this actually might even be a good thing in the sense that um, the affordable housing trust fund dollars um, are slow to get out too trying to find themselves in the right housing productions or in the right programmatic activity. And we know we have, I think until September 22 with the CDBG monies. It might be September 21, um, but I think it's 22. Uh, all the one from the six. Thank you. I appreciate your time, Alderman from the 16th. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? 
It's been moved by the alderman from the 16th, seconded by the alderman from the 13th that we adopt amendment number seven. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do we have any further, any additional amendments? Any additional amendments, any additional discussion on this item? I believe we, I, there should be before you amendment number eight, Mr. President. All right. Uh, please read amendment number eight. Amendment number eight is board bill 49 to amend uh, beginning line uh, exhibit a program services dash food delivery elderly strike out the number 2 million and insert the number 2,756,527. So we'd be removing two triple zero triple zero inserting two seven five six five two seven. I'll entertain a motion on amendment number eight. So moved. Been moved by the other one from the 13th. Second. Second by the other one from the 27th. Any discussion on amendment number eight? Any discussion on amendment number eight? It's been moved by the other one from 13th. Second by the other one from 27th that we adopt amendment number eight. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All in favor. Uh, that concludes my presentation for today, sir. All right. Any further uh, discussion on the amended board bill number 40, 49 that's before us? Any for, further discussion? Uh, Mr. Uh, President, are we able to ask questions because we received um, this helpful document from the mayor's office that provided some more specificity to the um, allocation of funding? And I did have a, a quick few questions uh, on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Please proceed, all the women. All right, this is for Mr. Conway. Uh, Mr. I'm Conway. here. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? She's muted. Uh, you're on mute. I can hear you. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So rapid rehousing is mentioned in a couple of different places in the allocation of funding, and I was wondering how you are determining prioritizing rapid rehousing versus um, expanded shelter beds. Um, it, it, it's a, a two-part process, um, and with the, so the rapid rehousing um, generally and historically works in tandem with um, the shelter beds. We would prefer not to have people in shelters, and um, we have to expand, excuse me, expand the capacity um, of rapid rehousing. So if you want to point me to one of those specific numbers. Um, I can go over that particular program with you. Sure. Well, it's mentioned under the Department of Health and um, or Department of Human Services as, as the first line item, um, rapid rehousing of existing homeless. And then um, right before the end of that same section, um, rapid rehousing and additional shelter that expansion. Right. So number one, we'll be working to move the people out of the shelters and do the case management with, in essence, it, you know, hopefully right now that the limit on my homeless population, which would be awful optimistic, is going to stay where we're at. We know that we're, our homeless population will grow at the start growing at the end of July, but this is the, the case management, the housing, the employment search, the things that we're currently doing now with our service providers. And the other area you had mentioned is um, and if you look at number 11, this is what we're going to have to do longer term and as people become homeless, um, we're, we're preparing I'm sorry, for, I'm sorry, number 11, uh, number 11, where? On, I, you've got, I assume you're looking, oh, I thought you were looking at our little description, um, sheet that we sent you. It's not numbered. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to. Let me, I'll count. Um, yeah, I happen to put the numbers on mine. Uh, I have 11 street outreach for homeless, but nine is rapid rehousing. It's only mentioned one place in the description, but twice on the um, exhibit. Right. So rapid rehousing, three from the bottom under the Department of Human Services. 
Right. And that's 650,000. Mm, okay. Um, have you spoken to the United Way about whether $400,000 is sufficiently funding them to address the increase in need for assessments that they'll have coming in? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Valerie Russell has, has reached out to the groups. We, we know historically what we think we need to do to revamp that program. And the, the one thing is we do have some flexibility to add funds to these programs because we are, um, we'll be holding back um, $5 million just for a period of the next three or four weeks because we'll be coming in with the, uh, the uh, election board in the, a fire department one and the federal government just gave us um, last week $4.3 million more in ESG grants. So we have to bring those bills um, to the Board of Aldermen, and hopefully we will have those ready to introduce next week. And it gives us the ability to add to these various uh, programs as the uh, picture becomes clearer as to what the greater and greater needs are going to be. She's muted. All the one from the six, you're muted again. Sorry about that. Um, on eviction mediation, it indicates that all of the money will go to the Conflict Resolution Center. Um, I'm not familiar that they've had experience mediating cases like this. Um, I think it's important, but there's also no allocation of funny, funding for legal advocacy or attorneys. Um, and everybody that I've talked to who, who works um, on these eviction cases, including um, some folks who oversee these cases with the courts, I think that's a very important piece of this that can't be left out. Um, we are working with the courts and I, I have spoken with the judges and that will be an opportunity if you if, if you look at um, and excuse me. So we have one one category and that's the housing locators housing specialist. Um, and then we have the eviction mediation. Um, we would prefer to intervene with those. We will have the opportunity, I, I told you next week when we come in, if, if the judges, um, we're monitoring the cases that are in the court right now, but we have the um, ability, um, and if you look at number eight that I gave you and then the explanation, the St. Louis Mediation Project offer free mediation services in eviction cases which will be conducted by or under the supervision of attorneys to ensure agreement will be accepted by the court. Um, but if we need to hire more than that in the way of attorneys, uh, we'll have that ability as we do the, as we put to use the next $4.2 million in ESG funds. Okay, uh, last question is, um, have you tried to engage with any of the Utilities, I appreciate the utility assistance being a line item, um, but just a conversation about them extending um, credits, payment negotiations, um, and things of that nature so that uh, people are able to, uh, everyone's able to take advantage of it and not just a small percentage of the people we know will be impacted. Um, I, I know that the, the mayor originally reached out to the, the utilities. I don't know what the current status of that is. Um, I, and I don't know what, the, what their legal parameters are, but um, we will go back to them because we're going to let them know that the, the pool of funds are available so that we can help our residents pay their utilities. And um, hopefully this will be enough. Thank you so much. I'm, I don't have any other questions. Any further questions? Any further questions? Any further questions? All right, it's been moved by the all of one from the 13th and seconded by the all of one from the 27th that we adopt board bill number 49 um, as amended. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Davis? Aye. Alderman Vaccaro? Aye. 
Alderwoman Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Ingracia. Alderwoman Murphy. Alderman Calder. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Middlebrook. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Alderman Murphy. Uh, you have to, you're gonna have to unmute and. Aye. Alderman Calder. Alderman Muhammad. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Nine aye votes. All right, vote is staying the motion on all the one from the 13th and approved or Bill 49 to go to the full board. We will dispense. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the committee. You're welcome. We will dispense with line item six through eight. Um, and I just want to tell everybody, thank you for getting all these things in order. Uh, I was a bit frustrated last time, you understand? I, I, I like to have these things decent and in order and um, just not accustomed, accustomed to seeing them you know, go the way they did that last time. So I appreciate all the work everybody put in to get all these amendments lined up so that they were ready to go today. So thank you to all for that. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by all the ones in six, seconded Second. by the all the ones from the 27th. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, aye. Thank you all. Have a great day.